The last time we saw the Diesel 70, it was getting a fresh coat of highway yellow. But that was seven months ago. Since then, things have been quietly stirring in the operating room of iron and oil. Now, seven months later, the engine block is back, along with the crankshaft and a pile of cast iron anatomy that would make a blacksmith sweat. These aren't just parts, they're vital organs, each one essential to reviving a beast that hasn't breathed fire in decades. Enter Craig Stadola, part mechanic, part cardiologist for cold-blooded giants. With a torque wrench in one hand and a surgeon's patience in the other, Craig begins the delicate task of rebuilding this iron heart, restoring life with every measured move. It's slow work, honest work, the kind of work that turns wrenches and his scalpels and cast iron into something just shy of living. And when he's done, this old warhorse will thump back to life, loud and proud like it never missed a beat. Well, on our uh, Diesel 70, which is a 1933, we have gotten uh, all of our uh, floorboards, seat assemblies, and uh, fender brackets, such, all remanufactured and done, along with like a fan shroud we had repurposed and the radiator is done. We're all down to just about the engine compartment now, so, and that's been two and a half years that we've been trying to get pieces put together for all this, so kind of nice to see some of that back home for a change so yeah so show me show me some of those components and then oh, okay talk me through how you kind of got to that point. yep well we didn't have a crankshaft to begin with so we had that made you know and uh, that was a three and a half month ordeal just to get a crank made and then from there we took that and the and the block down the flywheel to have balanced and stuff and in the process we've had our rods rebushinged and the lower end's done, and them, and along with it, we had uh, a situation with the block where uh, the deck had to be done, and our uh, head bolts are tied through from the main bearing cap all the way to the top, and to get them all out, we had to take a nut off up here, and also then this, would, this little peg, which locks it in on a slot, is supposed to thread this all the way out the top, but the main bearing so were over torqued at one time and uh, twisted the thread which were out of time to come out so we ended up cutting them off and having to have all new uh, main bearing bolts made and there was a little slot which I don't know if you can see but they have a little ring in there that once you get into place that that goes in and that keeps it from turning so that you can put your top nut back on in the whole nine yards and uh, around that top nut they had these rings which sat in there very few came out which we ended up torching them out which there's what you end up and then we had new ones made type of situation and also when we got into the heads we got our injectors done and they call this part a cage which goes into the head and you have water that comes up to the outside of it to cool and everything and there's a chamfer in here to fit yours stuff we had to have these manufactured and then where the injector sprays into a piece this is threaded into the bottom of the head which they call a burner tube we had to have these made then to hold the injectors into place these rings had to be made in the hardware which there's two per injector we also had to have valves made from top to bottom and once they were done why then we had to have our rotor caps and keepers all made with it and these here are the new rings to go in around the uh, head bolts when you're done to eat up that space and they also everybody well, if you don't know on the block itself we had all the uh, main bearings taken out and rebabbited so that we could rebore and we'll show you some of that here later but everything is a shim adjusted situation on there so when you get done you got to shim adjust and then we have our pistons which we got and we ended up taking and uh, milling a lot of this down and then they're also balanced we've got slugs in the middle of our wrist pins to keep everybody same weight but we ended up milling down off the top with what we got made and in here so we could come up with the right compression ratio. Craig walks us through the heart of this beast. 
and shows exactly where each piece will need to be surgically stitched back into place. And these are all the new studs that we were telling you about. They're all in place now at this time. And this block was decked. Also it was done as a line bore. And uh, we put new sleeves inside down there where the O-rings go. And also up here we had to uh, stand this out to accommodate the sleeves that we had made. And uh, from there, we'll get down here and show you our main bearing situation. And since there's no uh, bearings available for any of this kind of stuff, as old as it is, these are all these main bearing caps were taken off and all the inserts were taken out and we sent them all into uh, a place and had them all rebabbited. And uh, then it was all done and I'll show you what we did to do that process. At the machine shop, why the guy take, took an old Cummins block and uh, reboarded it to fit the bearings off of that 9900. And that way, he, when he put them all in there, then he could line bore everybody all at one time so they end up with everything like it's supposed to be. And this here is our flywheel, which we had balanced type situation. And our crankshaft, which is brand new, other than uh, we had uh, put the old counterweights back onto it. And then it was balanced at that time, which they did catch quite a bit of difference in that, too. So, And uh, also, the, what's interesting is the block of the 9900 over there actually uh, weighs more than the 11,000 block in the six-cylinder 75 diesel engine. So, in the process of something like this taking over two years, so far, what do you feel are probably the things that have taken the most time or what holds up a restoration like this more than anything else? Anything that you have to have made, such as the crankshaft, that was one of the biggest situations. Like I said, that took three and a half months after we convinced him to do it. You know, not everybody wants to do a one-on situation and they did an excellent job. And then, then from there, getting parts for this 9900 is, is terrible and everything you get is needs work there's nothing you can just get take and put on it all has to be restored you know from top to bottom you know so so when it's all said and done uh how many how much more time do you think it's going to take before we have a a running diesel 70. between two and three months you know to get it all done and fabricated and try and make sure you got all the lines because it came in a in a basket of parts so we're not sure if we have everything because the parts books, you know, they're a little vague on stuff too, so, but we think we've got everything, so. So when it's all said and done, it will be uh, running? Yes, it'll be a running, moving machine. We've got the pony motor done already, situation, other than a few castings for it, but uh, yes, it should be a running, moving machine. And then once it's running, what after that? After that, why then John's gonna let us run it around a lot a couple times, and then it'll be, everything will be drained and back into the museum, along with everything else. In the long story of Caterpillar, the Diesel 70 holds a strange little chapter, a bold idea that never quite found its legs. They had, uh, back in the day, had the 65 diesel, and uh, they wanted to build the 70 and install a six-cylinder diesel, but they did not make it in time, I guess, for the debut, and they kept with the four-cylinder 9900, and every time, you know, they're trying to speed things up and get more horsepower to it, and. Uh, this just did not hold up to it. So there was, I was told, anywhere between 50 and 60 of these made. And then there's, I, from what I've heard, five to seven, maybe eight left. And nothing's really up in a real running shape. So that's what makes it really tough for parts. Being this is a frame beginning of the D8 versus the uh, 65, that framing is still off of like the best uh, 60 and stuff like that. So. We got to a different transmission and bigger clutches and everything, and then the engine just wasn't enough, so. So would this be fair to say that probably one of the only fully restored 70s when it's all finished? As far as I know, I haven't heard anything else, which, you know, we're willing to hear anything back from people, but yeah.